Hello dear students, in this session we are going to learn one very very important principle that is law of conservation of linear momentum based on which we will have to solve a lot of problems in first PUC later, okay. You might be already knowing it, okay, what is that? If there is an isolated system, okay, total linear momentum is conserved. I'll read out, in an isolated system of interacting particles, total linear momentum is conserved. So what is the meaning of that? I'll just give an example. Say suppose that there is a uh, there is a there is a rifle, and the, inside the rifle there is a bullet. Okay. So initially, total momentum of the system is zero. Why? What is momentum? Mass into velocity. Okay. Initially, this rifle was at rest. Initially, total momentum of the system is zero. Once the bullet is fired. Okay. Once the bullet is fired. Bullet moves with some ve velocity. Mass of the bullet, this is velocity of the bullet, and this rifle recoils back. Correct, na? So this is mass of the rifle, and uh, this is velocity of the rifle. Okay. Now, total momentum means mass of the rifle, okay, into velocity of the rifle plus mass of the bullet into velocity of the bullet should be equal to zero. Means initial total momentum of the system was zero. No, finally also momentum should be zero. Why that will be zero? Because uh, since the direction of uh, velocities are opposite, okay, one will be plus and other will be minus and they get cancelled. Okay, we will see how to derive it, and we will solve one uh, sample problem so that you can understand better. Okay, first thing, what we will do? I'll consider a I'll consider two objects okay very simple concentrate a and b object a is moving with velocity u1 object b is moving with the moving with velocity u2 okay or say the object b is uh, uh, moving with the uh, moving in opposite direction say the object b is moving in opposite direction that is moving with velocity u2 mass of object a is m1 mass of object B is M2. Okay. After, and they collide. Okay, they collide. Okay, after collision. They collide. After collision. After collision. Say object A huh, moves with velocity uh, V1. Okay. Moves with velocity V1 in this direction. And object uh, B uh, moves with velocity uh, V2 moves with velocity v2. Mass of A is m1, mass of B is m2. Okay, now try to understand, try to concentrate. Now here we are going to use two Newton's laws. One is Newton's second law. What is that? Force is equal to rate of change of momentum, delta P by delta T. F is equal to delta P by change in momentum by time. Newton's second law. What is this? Newton's second law. And we are also going to use Newton's third law. What is that? Force on object A due to B is equal to, is equal and opposite to force on object B due to A. These two laws we are using. First we will use Newton's second law. According to Newton's second law, force on A, okay, due to B, force on A due to B is equal to, Force on A, correct now, we are calculating force on A. What, what is F? A B means force on A due to B. This is very important step. Force on A is equal to change in rate of change of momentum of A. Okay. Huh. Force on A, correct now, force on A due to B, due to B is equal to change in momentum of A. What is change in momentum? Change in momentum means final momentum minus initial momentum. Force on A is equal to change in momentum of A. Final momentum of A minus initial momentum of A divided by time taken. Say the, the collision time is delta. Okay. Uh, what is PA prime? PA prime is final momentum of A. PA is initial momentum of A. Okay. What is FBA? Force on B force on B due to A is equal to change in momentum, change in momentum of B 
correct now change in momentum of b divided by delta t what is change in momentum of b final momentum of b minus initial momentum of b divided by time taken hope you can understand here also change in momentum of a okay divided by delta t okay, delta stands for change what do you mean by how to how to read it delta p means change in momentum delta v means change in velocity hope you understood these two steps okay force on a means change in momentum of a divided by delta t how according to newton's second law what what does newton's second law says force is equal to rate of change of momentum of a body okay now so here what we have done these two steps we have used newton's second law now according to according to newton's third law according to according to newton's third law okay i can write i can write f a b is equal and opposite to f b a now what happens what happens what is f a b this p a prime minus p a divided by delta t is equal to p b prime is equal and opposite to minus is there okay okay i'll just uh, okay minus yeah pb prime pb prime minus pb minus pb divided by delta t so what happens this here delta t and delta t gets cancelled correct now so what do we get pa prime minus pa is equal to pa prime minus pa is equal to sorry is equal to minus pb prime minus of minus plus pb minus pb prime plus pb now what happened this pb prime you bring it here what happens pa prime plus pb prime is equal to pa plus pb what is pa initial momentum of a what is pb initial momentum of b what is this total initial momentum of the system okay what is pa prime final momentum of a what is pb prime final momentum of b so what is this together total final momentum what happened total final momentum total final momentum of the system is equal to total initial momentum total initial momentum okay. this is what we have written what we have written total momentum of the system is conserved according to law of conservation of linear momentum total linear momentum is conserved means constant means linear momentum should not change means initial momentum should be equal to final momentum that is what we have proved okay we have proved that final momentum of the system okay is equal to initial linear momentum hope you understood this next one sample problem simple problem a 40 kg shell is flying at a speed of 72 km per hour okay first i'll convert this into meter per second 72 into 5 by 18 you may remember 18 goes four times okay 20 meter per second 20 meter per second if you did not understand this refer back to the previous videos okay it explodes okay now what will i'll write down the situation here a 40 kg shell is flying at a speed of 72 km per hour means 20 meter per second there was a 40 kg bombshell it is it was moving at a speed of 20 meter per second then what happens it explodes into two pieces one piece of mass 50 kg stops it explodes into two two pieces one piece of mass 15 kg stops means its velocity becomes zero its velocity becomes zero okay then another, another piece will have a mass equal to 25 kg correct now so that 15 plus 25 is 40 calculate the velocity of the other piece okay what is the velocity of this you have to find out okay now what is the concept what is the constant what is the concept initial momentum of the system is equal to final momentum of the system initially there was only one body correct now so 
mass into velocity is equal to m into v equal to now there are two bodies correct now this is uh, first one this is second one okay this velocity is v1 this velocity v2 i'll take now there are two bodies correct now finally there are two bodies that should be equal to m1 v1 plus m2 v2 i'll write like this now what happened? initially mass is 40 kg velocity is 20 mass is 40 velocity is 20 is equal to m1 m1 v1 15 into 0 because body of mass 15 kg stops plus m2 v2 25 into v2 25 into v2 that is what we have been asked calculate the velocity of the other piece correct now so this is equal to 40 into 20 is 800 is equal to this is 0 correct now this is 0 25 v2 okay v2 is equal to 800 by 25 okay so 25 goes four times in 100 so 25 multiplied by 4 equal to 100 or 100 by 25 is 4 800 by 25 means 4 into 8 32 correct now so v2 is equal to 32 meter per second hope you understood understood this problem very simple there was a bombshell moving initially it had a momentum m into v then it was then it exploded now there are two pieces so initial momentum mv should be equal to m1 v1 plus m2 v2 but what they have given m1 v1 is zero one piece stops okay what we have written mv is equal to m1 v1 plus m2 v2 we substituted we got the answer very simple example hope you understood the derivation okay and the concept thank you very much